tuning in. Today we're going to tell you exactly how you can tell if something is a print or something is a painting. And it's not very difficult and by the end of this video you'll know how to do it. Thanks for watching. We'll be right back. Okay, so there's several things you want to check for. First, you have your oil paintings. Secondly, you have your watercolors. And then you have a variety of printing techniques. Um, there is quite a bit to go over, so today we're just going to keep it fairly basic, fairly straightforward for all you beginners. And why is this important? Because artwork, among anything else in the antique trade, is the one where you can really hit a big score. Um, you can discover a really unknown gem. And as you look into it, as you follow antiques a little bit more, as you learn a little bit more of these techniques we're trying to share with you, you're going to develop an eye. And that is probably the greatest compliment anyone can give someone in the antique trade when they say you have a great eye. And what that means is you've taken years, um, you've studied a lot of things, you've handled a lot of things, and you've looked at a lot of things. And what that does is it develops your eye to recognize quality. And that's quality whether it has a signature or not. That's quality where you can look at an abstract painting and you don't think right away any old child can do that. There's things to look for and there's things that you will learn over time. Um, but there's a lot of things you can learn by the end of this video today and it's going to help you a lot. So, the biggest problem you're going to run into is with watercolors and prints because they have a similar look. Now, when you're dealing with oil paintings, on the other hand, they have a texture. So, in other words, you can feel the painting. And with a magnifying loop, you can certainly see. You can see the brush marks, you can see where the painting is globbed up on top of it. Now, with all these things I'm going to tell you today, there is going to be exceptions to the rule. There are going to be people that deliberately tried to fake things. There is old prints that had paint put over top of them in certain highlight areas to make it look like a real painting. So there is things you do have to watch for, but in general, we're going to show you how to do that. Now, you've heard me talk about this a lot on our videos if you're a subscriber and you've watched our videos, and that is having a magnifying loop. Now this one, I have put a link up to several videos. I will link it again in the description below. So if you click on that link, it will take you right to the right page in Amazon where you can buy one of these for yourself. Now, last time I checked, these had dropped down to $11.99. Just pull them out like so. The light goes on automatically, which is a huge feature. Um, now, with this one, you have a 10 power, which is your big one here, which is your most common. Then you have a 20 and a 30. Now, 30 is really a magnifier. You, you can look at an individual hair on your arm if you want to. The other great advantage this one has is it has a black light built into it. Now what a black light will do, now I don't have any overpaint on this, but a black light will fluorescent um, anything that's been painted recently. So if you had an old painting and somebody came along and signed a new name on it and you put that black light over it, it is going to glow greeny like a neon green light and you're going to know that it's been uh, tampered with or had an, a, a fake signature added to it. So it will show you if somebody's re-glued a neck on a statue, a figure, and repainted it where you can't see, a black light will tell you that. So it's a very handy little thing. So for $11.99, I highly recommend this. Um, the owner of the company even got in touch with me after I bought it for $14.99 and said if I had any problem, let him know. He'd take care of it. It's been fantastic. So what you're going to look for so we're just going to set aside these oil paintings for a minute. We're going to look at something like this, which is a watercolor. Now, how can you tell it's a watercolor? Again, get your loop, and you're going to look at it, and underneath the loop, you're going to see, it's going to almost look like a puddle everywhere where there's a certain color put on. Uh, watercolor tends to bleed into the paper a little bit, and it gets sort of a... Uh, it looks, looks like a little puddle is the best way to describe that. Now, how can you tell it's not a print? 
if it was a print, it's done through a photographic process. Now what that does is it creates a picture out of pixels, so little tiny dots. And under a loop, you're not going to see it with your bare eye, but under a magnifier, you will see that the whole picture is made up of little dots and dashes. And what that tells you is that that's a photographic print, because no painter can paint that way. Now there is a form of painting called pointillism, where pictures are made by dots, but they're never uniform like they are in a print. And photographic print really isn't worth any money because they can print as many as they want. So you want to be able to differentiate between a watercolor, a genuine watercolor, and a print of a watercolor. Okay, so that is your technique. If there's pixels and there's prints, and I'm going to put up an example under magnification and a close photograph so you can see what I'm talking about. And we will put up the photograph of the watercolor and of a print of a watercolor. Okay, so I'm just going to have a look at a few more of these things now. This, which is quite an old print, French print, it is actually a print. And if you take your magnifier and look at it, you're going to see the dots and dashes with color over the top. So sometimes what you'll get is a print where they've added a little watercolor wash to, but you can tell it wasn't painted by the hand of a man who is not going to paint that way. He's going to make brush strokes and that sort of thing, not just random dots until the entire picture is made up. So, valuable because it's an old French print, uh, great subject matter, um, but not a painting. Okay, and now you have oil paintings and things which you want to check because that's where the real money can be is in oil paintings. So, let's say you're looking at a couple of oil paintings here and you want to tell a little something about the age. Maybe you can't read the signature, which is a common problem. Artists are very good at hiding their signature. Or maybe you don't know who it is. You look it up and you can't find anything out, but you'd like to know maybe how old it is. The biggest thing you can check on an oil painting is always the back of the painting. So what you see here, brand new. See the canvas, it's white, it's shiny, it's new. The back of the canvas here is new. The brown stretcher, the wood, doesn't have a lot of darkening. That's not a terribly old painting, and as a matter of fact, it's dated. This one is 2005. Very nicely done. Real Group of Seven look to it. Very nice painting, but not terribly old. So that's sort of a giveaway right there. This one, you'll see how both the canvas has darkened. This is air burn, dirt, things you find in the environment just sort of get absorbed into the canvas, and it will darken with age. If you find one mid to late Victorian. I've seen these almost black. They're so dirty. But then, you know, you had wood smoke in the house, things like that, things that would darken it more. Um, so all of these little tips you, you put together like a detective piece and you use them all to try and figure out the age, not just one thing. But that's a good thing to look for. You can see here that even the unpainted canvas up here where it's turned over, see the difference? It's yellow and white. This painting is probably about 1930-1940. This is 2005. So, and you can also see the pine stretcher. See the color of this? It's almost like a dark orange. And this one's well, nice blonde white. So, back of paintings will tell you as much, if not more, than the front of a painting will. And the other thing you want to look for in that respect is if it's a really old painting and it's been relined, so what that means is on the front, which this painting has, it has crack allure. So the painting, the paint is thick and it started to crack over time from the flexing of the canvas and this sort of thing. So if it gets really bad on a good painting, what they will do is they'll actually reline it. So they'll take the painting out of the stretcher and they will basically fix a brand new piece of canvas to the back, which will stabilize it, which will hold it stable. And then what you're going to see when you flip over that old painting is you're going to see a brand new white shiny canvas. Well, what you want to look for then is signs of extra nail holes would be one giveaway. And if you look closely, you may be even able to see the two canvases. Okay, but extra nail holes will tell you it's probably come off the stretcher at one point and been put back on again. So that's one thing you want to look for. Um, so don't immediately discount a painting if you see the white on the back. That one 
it's night and day. I mean, you just know right away it's not that old. But if you find one that has an, an old look, uh, you want to be careful not to pass it up because you just see uh, quickly see a new colored canvas. It may have been relined. So that's one thing you want to watch for. Another thing in the art world that you're going to commonly run into, and which more people should look for, quite frankly, because they can be quite valuable, are etchings. Now there's etchings and then there's engravings. Um, engravings are typically things you'll see in old books, illustrations, black and white, and um, you know, there'll be historic scenes, that sort of thing. Those are engravings. Now this is actually an etching. So the difference being that the artist creates etchings and they actually etch that into a block and then they make the print themselves and then they generally sign it and number it in pencil at the bottom. So this one is John Byrne, a very famous Canadian artist. But what you want to look for to tell if it's actually an etching, and again, I've seen it where people have done this in a, to fake it, and it's a print, but it's, it shows this, but very rarely do you see that. So this is what you want to look for. Right at the edge of the print, it's going to be indented. So you're going to see where it's been pressed hard into the art paper, and it's actually made an indentation all the way around. So it's sunk in very slightly, and that's going to tell you that you're dealing with an etching. Not a drawing, not a pencil drawing. It's an etching. It's been pressed in. But they are very valuable, especially when they're done by a, a good artist, because the artist had a hand in creating it. So it's not a print that was just randomly run off of, basically, like a photocopier. He actually created this and signed it. Okay, so that's one thing you want to watch for. Another thing you're going to find is you're going to find paintings, and this is done by Gordon Payne, again, a very well-known Canadian artist. Uh, it's a painting in the States, in Massachusetts, where he painted quite a bit, but it's not on canvas. This one's on board. Okay, So, early boards, you're going to see a lot of variations of things they painted on. Sometimes they'd paint on wood panels, and they'd actually be shaved off at the corners to fit inside the frame. Um, but earlier panels are going to look different than some of your later panels. Um, a lot of them will be artist board. You'll see a little picture in the middle. It'll be white on the back. You'll see the canvas over the edge. Those are more modern boards. Early paintings, and this one is 1923, you may find on board like this. But again, if you magnify this and look at it, you're going to know right away that it's an actual painting. It's not a print. You can see the texture. You can feel the texture, but you can see and find the brush strokes. But again, you got to have one of these. Again, another early painting, and this one is probably turn of the century, 1900, that sort of thing. And again, it's an early form of panel that you will see a lot of. And these were early artist boards that were made up. But these tend to be on your earlier paintings, so that's something you want to take note of as well. Um, and things like this. Very early print. Again, probably 1910 period. Um, but once you magnify it, right down to the fine details, you're going to see all the little dots. But first view, somebody might think that's a watercolor. But these are going to be the ways you're going to tell between a print and a painting which is your biggest valuable difference. And then you have your difference of your oil paintings and your watercolors. But like I said, a watercolor is generally going to look like little puddles. Um, and hopefully uh, you can see those pictures when I put those up there. So that's sort of art 101. Um, the easiest way to tell between a print and a painting and if you buy yourself one of these, you can run around your whole house and check every one you have. And by the end of that, you will know exactly if you have a real painting, a print of a painting, and limited edition prints, very common. You know, you get the signature down here and you get the number on the other side. Most of those are just going to be a photographic print, which is made up of little dots, and a dot matrix, um, like pixels, like your TV. Basically, that's the same thing. It's pixels, and there's going to be a lot of them, and you're going to be able to tell. And hopefully you can go out there and find yourself a really good painting that someone else might think is a print or whatever. So happy hunting. Get out there and see what you can find. But art is one where you hear the biggest stories where people go from rags to riches. So it's always a good one to look for. Thanks for watching again and hopefully we'll see you next week.
please remember to subscribe. We need our subscribers. We're at 82 as the time of this uh, recording. And once we get to 100, then we get to have, it's a YouTube Antique Quest, and that's all you'd have to look for, and you'd find us instead of XYZ597 or whatever our code is now. Okay, so we're looking forward to getting to 100 subscribers. You just have to click that little subscribe button. Uh, actually, I think it's in that corner. And you can click the little bell, and that will notify you anytime we put up a new video. And we sure appreciate all those that have subscribed already, and we'd love to hear some comments from you. Any questions you have, please put them in the comments below, and I will answer them. Thanks very much. Have a great day. God bless.